Hey, what's going on guys? Justin Williams back at you with another Flint Mapping 101 on tips and tricks. And today we're going to be looking at tools and also how to even make some. So stick with me. All right, so the first thing I want to talk to you about as far as tools, I'm going to break them down little by little, but it has to do with making sure you got leather on you. And that's once again, something as simple as some basic leg leather to sit on your legs. And then also here, that way you can dust off all your debitage and flakes. But I highly encourage that you make sure you have some smaller ones, that way you can hand, them, hand hold them so whenever you're pressure flaking. So there's different aspects. There's the, the batoning, where you're baking, breaking into it, percussion, and where you wanna make sure you've got adequate uh, protection on your legs. And then for pressure flaking, making sure you got small handhold uh, aspects of leather as well. So we got leather as part of our tools. Then we also need to make sure we got different things that you can use to abrade. And this is where we are actually taking and whether a rock or something and abrading it and smoothing it out and processing it. So make sure you have some definitely ways of pressure or for sanding off your, your stones. So the next tool I want us to look at are boppers and also people call them billets. You wanna make sure you have them in several different sizes. You have really large ones for working and taking off large spalls to smaller ones as you begin to break down flakes and all the way down into very small uh, aspects. So you wanna make sure you carry them in several different sizes. You can also, if you don't wanna use copper, you can also go abo style and use different aspects like antler, we could take this off right here. It's a big enough antler, a deer antler. But if you can get um, buffalo, not necessarily buffalo, but uh, the caribou and different aspects of moose, um, you can definitely make those work great as well for your billets and going old school abo. And stay tuned because later on in this series of Flint Napping 101, I plan on doing an abo video. So we're just not going to get into it today. The next tool I want us to look at now is our pressure flakers. And everything here comes from our Ishii stick, our large Ishii stick for our pressure flaker there, to different, this one here is a horse, a horse nail notcher. And then you got your basic pressure flakers that you use on a regular basis. You wanna make sure you have a larger one and a smaller one for different aspects. Then also, what I typically like to do is go ahead and do a little bit of abo by having a copper on one end and the antler on the other, which can come off of your various different antlers. Not only is the horse antler great for notching, you can also use these different copper notchers as well. And they got different aspects that you can get to keep them nice and flat and try to begin to put notching on your arrowheads. And these are your notchings. You got side notchings, on this one and bottom notchings on this one. So you definitely got different perspectives and aspects to notching with different tools. All right, you also have what is another type of a braider and grinder for sharpening different tools. So anytime you're processing, you want to be able to sharpen your pressure flakers and shape them. And so that's important too, that you have a quality, uh, different type of a braider for sharpening your uh, pressure flakers. And the last tool I want to highly encourage is make sure you have a multi-tool because you need to make sure you're capable of tightening and untightening different aspects of your tools. So these are the primary tools that I encourage you guys to make sure you have access to when it comes to flint napping. But when you start off, you may not have the finances or the ability to start off with all these tools. And there are some people who are flint knoppers out there who even have even more tools and they're even greater. But the first thing that you just need to keep in mind is just a basic few things to make sure you have with you. You want a basic popper or, and a basic pressure flaker, a basic grinder, and some basic leather to get you started. So now that we've covered the basics of flint napping tools, the last thing I want to talk about is how to actually make a 
a couple. Now I'm not going to go into severe detail, but I want to at least show you an oversight and give you an overview, simple break breakdown of how to make your own tools. All right, so I want to talk to you about making two primary tools. We're going to be talking about making a billet, and then we're going to be talking about making a pressure flaker as well. So the billet is, once again, you've got just a basic piece of wood with a copper head on it. But a lot of times these coppers are flat, and you want to make sure they're rounded. So there's two, two different aspects you can do to do that. You can take something like a hammer and put it over the top and begin to beat it out. Once you get it on there, you just begin to hammer it around it and round it off. And you'll just keep going until it's super round like this one here. All right, another option is to go with a system. And these are excellent systems. I highly encourage these. These are, once again, they're copper, they're designed for flint napping, and you can get them in all different shapes, or not shapes, but sizes, but based off of the, based off of the copper piece you're gonna be using. And so this one fits on there nice and smooth. See how it's so? And then goes over the top. And begin processing out until it rounds. Now, once again, this here is not completely rounded. You will eventually get it this round by applying heavier, harder hits. But for time sakes and for video purposes, we're gonna continue just to give you a, a basic understanding and highlight how it works. Once you get this rounded properly, that's whenever you begin to set it down and process it. And you're gonna to begin to clean it on the inside, making sure you remove all oils, sandpaper it, and then you're good to go. You're gonna set it up, you're gonna take a type of propane and lead, and as you heat it up, you're gonna fill it up with different types of, not different type, but lead, quality lead. Make sure you're using good quality lead. And from there, you can begin to hold it up with the pliers and heat it up from the bottom to get the lead to be centered. From there, you would make sure you set it out to let it settle. So the amount of lead is really up to you. You can do two thirds lead, you can do half lead or a third. Uh, typically for me, I like to do up to two thirds lead and I'll put that in my billet. And once again, the big key aspect is making sure that uh, it's gonna be quality and works good for you. And then, so as you are letting it set and dry out, then you can make sure you apply it to a nice wood. And a lot of times, uh, uh, the Osage Orange is a great wood if you really want to invest some quality wood into it, but some hickory works as well. And all I do is use my epoxy glue to make sure that I, I, it, gets, it gets attached quality. Because otherwise, if you don't use quality glue, when you strike it, it's just going to go flying off. So make sure you use a nice epoxy glue, extra strength when it comes to making your billet. So hopefully I covered everything there. Um, once again, if you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comment section below. So that's how to make our billet. The next thing is our pressure flaker, and you can actually attach it to both ends if you wanted to. Um, or you could just once again, get another piece of wood, and then what you're going to use is different copper aspects. You got thinner coppers, get a close up of these for pressure flaking, the, your notches, and then the bigger ones for just your overall general pressure flaking. And what I typically do is I make sure if it's my copper, I actually will spin it. I will attach this to a, a firm uh, object and then I'll attach a drill and then I'll spin it out. Once you get a proper piece though, then you can simply find a center spot on it and hammer it in. And there you go, just a basic pressure flaker to get you started. All right, well that's all the tools and some tips and tricks on making them. Hopefully you guys got some ideas there. Um, like I said, a lot of my struggles is memory loss because of the brain surgery, but uh, just taking it each and every day, living for God and pra praising Him and pushing through. So hopefully you got something out of the tool making and hopefully you got some tips and tricks on the tools to contender, consider starting off with. So thanks again for all your support. I appreciate you. Be sure to share, subscribe, and stay tuned, guys.